you're on. Okay, one of the things I want to make sure that we get a chance to cover are steri strips and how to use them correctly. Uh, my wife is an orthopedic nurse and a post-op nurse, and one of the things that drives her nuts is when people put steri strips on incorrectly. So for the sake of my marriage, I want to make sure you guys know what people expect. Um, steri strips a lot of times will be used in place of sutures for wounds that you can get approximate, the edges to approximate pretty easily and aren't likely to spread apart with movement and over time, things like that. Um, we'll also use them after surgery to replace sutures or staples that we remove because if you have an abdominal wound, for example, there's a lot of pressure on that wound. The, stitch, the stitches or the staples may come out, but you still have a weakened area there with a lot of pressure on it. So a lot of times they'll reinforce those with steri strips when they take them out. So I want to show you what steri strips look like, and I assume you can see okay on here. Um, I don't have an unopened package with me, but um, these are basically like tape, like paper tape, fabric tape that's reinforced with thread, and they're made not to stretch. Where you would use these, uh, are, there, there's another place you might use these that I want to talk about before we get to using them for staples. Skin tears a lot of times, you, you'll see little ladies or little men who will run their arm down a chair or furniture and they'll bang their hand on the wall and it will tear back the skin on the back of their hands. It gives them a nice skin tear. That skin is intact but it's pulled up and you have this nice exposed area on the hands. A lot of times what people want to do is just take a tegaderm and throw over the top of that because they think it covers the wound and that's good enough. The thing about a tegaderm is it holds in lots of moisture, which can impede wound healing. And also, when you peel this thing off, you've already got this weakened skin here, and it's going to tear the skin more. Steri strips are a better solution for that. And what you want to use steri strips for, if you have the skin that has been torn back this way, most of the time the skin is crinkled up back at the, bottom, the back of that wound. What we want to do is, while very cleanly and very carefully, slowly slide that paper thin skin back into place as best as we can and try to get those edges to approximate back where they left. Sometimes you don't get all of it, but as much of it as you can get, the better. Because that's going to prevent that wound from needing to regrow skin over the top there. Once we have that done, we can use steri strips then around the edge of that wound to hold that skin in place. And that will allow that wound to drain as necessary. We can then put nice sterile gauze over the top of it to collect the drainage, and those steri strips will help hold that wound together. Much better healing, much better for your patients. So I want you to think about that next time you see a patient with a skin tear. The place you're more likely to see steri strips, and we'll grab my butt here for a second, are incisions. Um, what we need to do with steri strips is get the edges to approximate well, and then make sure that they'll stay there with very little force. Now this would be a bad place for steri strips instead of sutures because as this patient moves their hip, it's going to cause pressure on this and it's going to tear it apart. You're going to need sutures or staples in place to hold that together. After you take those out, however, if this is a surgical wound, we may put steri strips over it as we take them apart. But I'm going to use this as an example of, of, of a place you might use steri strips. A couple of things I'll show you also uh, as far as measuring wounds. Most of these cotton tip applicators have across the bottom of them are scores in centimeters or centimeters, and you can measure your wounds using those. You can measure length, width, and, and when you get the cotton, if you take out the applicator, you can put down in the wound, see that it's that deep, and then use that also to measure depth. So these a lot of times have on them places for measurement. So back to the steri strips. Steri strips will stick to the skin, and a lot of people think they'll stick fine, but the best thing to do before you put them on, uh, rather than letting them stick on their own, is use tincture of benzoin. It's either called benzoin tincture, or tincture of benzoin, or sometimes just benzoin. They come in lots of different forms, little capsules that you can break and rub on, or these swabs. Looks very similar to a betadine swab, but it's very different. This will have a very alcohol kind of pungent smell to it, and it will burn really severely if you get it in somebody's wound. So this is, this is tincture of benzoin, which is made to help steri strips, strips stick, sorry. And this is betadine, which is used to clean wound. They're very different. Make sure you grab the right thing. But what you're going to do, and I'm not, I'm not really wanting to rub this on this mannequin because it's, it's a pain to clean off the mannequins, 
is I'm going to take the tincture benzoin, I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to paint, not right up to the wound edge, but as close to it as I can get without getting any of it into the wound on either side of the wound. Because what I want is a nice sticky surface here for my steri strips to stick on. And you can see YouTube videos on this if it's not making sense. You can see how to apply tincture benzoin. But you're just going to rub it on here, just like that. And it will dry very tacky. Once I've done that, I'm going to take my steri strips and I'm going to find the right length. These steri strips are about this long. You can get them that are much longer and much shorter. But you want a good, you want as, as really as much space on this side of the wound that you can get. Because the more surface area you have covered by steri strips here, the tighter this is going to hold. A lot of people will cut these. I would not cut these. I would find strips that fit the size you need and use them. The next thing you'll see is they're spaced pretty closely. Now when I put on steri strips, I leave them spaced this close. Some people will peel off the steri strip, put one on, peel off another one, put it on, peel off another one, put it on. But I like the spacing that's here. My wife will do the same thing, but she'll almost put the steri strips on top of each other where they're touching. So you almost have a continuous barrier. But she's seen a lot of surgical wounds that are torn open, and that's one of the things she'll do. For most purposes, I think keeping them this close together is fine. So what I do then is, now imagine I've also got my hands washed, I'm wearing gloves, this is going to be a clean or sterile procedure depending on the wound. I'm going to um, open the steri strips, peel back a little bit of the edge, and then I'm going to stick them on my benzoin, and this won't stick, so I apologize in advance, it's not going to be the best demonstration. I'll start at the edge of the wound, I'll stick them on the benzoin, I don't necessarily squeeze my wound this tight, if I have to squeeze it this tight, steri strips are a bad idea. But what I want you to understand is I have to get the edges to accommodate well. I don't want them humped up over each other. I don't want a lot of space in there. So I pulled the edges. They're accommodating well. And I'm just going to pull the steri strips across the wound like that. And they would have stuck on the benzoin. I probably would have centered it better if I had not been on this side of the patient working over the top of them so that I had a little longer on this side, about half of what's here on this side. And what's going to happen then is they're going to stick and hold that wound together. Steri strips should be left on until they peel off on their own. Um, if I'm going to remove sutures, I'll take a suture out, every other suture like you would to make sure it's not going to, um, not going to dehiss or pull apart. And then I would maybe take this much space out, put steri strips on. Then take the next group of sutures out, put steri strips on. Then the next group of sutures out, put steri strips on. So I've reinforced the wound the whole way. If I take out all my stitches and then try to put steri strips on, there's a risk that the wound can dehiss, especially a surgical wound in the abdomen where there's lots of pressure. So again, the wound should stay together. Betadine should, or I'm sorry, benzoin should be on here. The spacing should be very close together, and you should have lots of space on either side of the wound. Tell the patients it's okay to get them wet to wash them, but you don't want them to soak, and to leave them on until they peel off on their own. What will happen is the edges will start to curl up as time goes on over a few days, just cut the curled edges off when the, when the, when the uh, steri strip comes off on its own. It's ready to come off. Normal wound care other than that. Thanks for your time. This goes along with your lecture for the wound lab. If you're not in uh, Nursing 3360 at Anderson University, there are a lot of things that I skipped in this video that I've talked about in other places. So don't use this as your own resource.